Now, we've all seen the pictures and videos of huge queues at airport security over the past few weeks and now we're halfway through the Easter holidays. How are our airports coping? Thousands of passengers are expected in Cork Airport alone over these two weeks as the demand for international travel continues to grow after the pandemic. Well, I'm delighted to say now that I'm joined by travel expert Owen Curry. Good afternoon, Owen. Good afternoon, Amy. Owen, week one of the Easter holidays down. What's the situation like in our airports now? Is there any improvement? Very busy, but the queues are moving. Uh, they got through the Easter weekend. It wasn't pretty. Uh, the queues ran to around 30 minutes. Uh, even today, Terminal 2 running at 30 minutes, uh, Terminal 1 uh, running at uh, 20. But uh, the initial break, when the summer schedules came in, a lot of people missed flights. No flights have been missed since. But uh, it has been quite crowded and if you were looking at a 30 minute queue before COVID it would be regarded as a bad day at the airport. Absolutely, I mean just last week we were seeing queues of three, four hours, people missing flights left right and centre. We obviously have our own international airport here in Kerry and we're very lucky to have it but a lot of people would be using those flights from Kerry to grab another from Dublin. What advice would you have for those people who are understandably nervous about travelling given the scenes of lengthy wait times? Absolutely. It's quite astonishing that uh, Crown 4 Kerry Airport is better connected to the National Rail, uh, rail Schedule uh, services that, uh, than Dublin is. But uh, the advice really from the uh, Dublin Airport is come early, but not too early. They're talking about two and a half hours for short haul, three and a half for long haul. Long haul going west is a little complicated because you also have a, sep- a second security queue before you come to U.S. immigration. That's been running at about 20 minutes, and the U.S. immigration queues have been running 45 minutes for non-U.S. citizens. That, that means that a lot of your three hours will be used up queuing. We also had uh, problems at airline check-in desks. Some of them weren't open uh, when people started arriving excessively early. And the biggest problem, uh, which emerged just before the weekend, is that Dublin Airport decided to open the security 24 hours but people were coming five six seven hours ahead of the flight when only one or two security channels were open and we had queues of 70 to 90 minutes at three in the morning the first flight takes off at first ventura uh, this weekend around uh, quarter to six so you can see what was happening a lot of people arriving early in the airport long queues and a lot of hanging around mm. no way around that dublin airport doesn't want you to do that but it's very hard when you've got your teenage children, uh, all of them at stake, trying to, to tell people don't come too early to the airport. Absolutely. Where are people going over the Easter holidays these two weeks now? Where's the demand for? The demand is uh, going to be a lot of Canaries. It's not warm enough in mainland Spain, Portugal yet, although there is quite a bit of traffic down to the trunk routes, uh, Malaga and Faro there, but we're really talking about the four Canary Islands. The biggest one, if you go through Europe, the biggest demand for uh, uh, for uh, the big, the most popular destination would be Gran Canaria, but in Ireland uh, it's a little bit different. Lanzarote is our most popular, followed by Gran Canaria, followed by uh, Tenerife, followed by Fuerteventura. They if looking for warmth at this time of the year. Uh, that's really our our option, our four or five hour, four four and a half half hour option. Uh, people can go further to the Caribbean or to Thailand. Thailand isn't open. Um, and it usually involves a second flight. But there are a lot of Irish people. There are about uh, 80,000 Irish people have holiday homes in Spain. So a lot of use being taken out of those over Easter as well. Mm. well is it fair to say that the, the travel rebound is in full flight, pardon the pun, but are we? is this as good as it gets now? Or is it going to continue It's pretty to much better? as good as it gets. Like we would have had the business day at the weekend with 305 uh, departures on Good Friday. That's nearly 90% of what we would have been doing in 2019. It's an important uh, early run to see how summer will work out. Uh, at Dublin Airport, have recruited 100 extra security personnel. It's going to take six weeks to get the licensing and the training in place for that. That will bring us to the end of May. And by the time the first flush of school holidays comes in June, Dublin Airport is hoping that its security queue problem will be solved. It's not confined to Dublin. Manchester has had a terrible week. Birmingham has had its moments as well in the last uh, week and 10 days. And right across Europe, they're facing the same problem post-COVID. Uh, fewer staff, a lot of airports let, co- let staff go. And the second thing is a COVID outbreak can take out several security mm. personnel without much warning. It's a 
difficult time for airports and it's by, it's by extension a hugely difficult time for passengers and for the airlines. Uh, they've been opening check-in desks about half an hour early, but there is a sort of a sense that by June everybody will have got their conjectures right because we've, they've moved into uh, a whole new scene in terms of passenger behaviour that doesn't really resemble what used to happen before COVID. Okay, yeah. And that delay, I suppose, in getting the personnel on board and hiring people, I mean, it's not as simple as just interviewing people, going through CVs. There's a whole area of vetting that has to be gone through, isn't there? Absolutely. There is also a contractual issue. They let a thousand staff go during COVID uh, under the the very strict rules when people take a redundancy package about rehiring them. They're not allowed to be rehired even on a part-time basis for two years. That means that your trained personnel, you aren't able to bring them back. Dublin Airport then went through people who transferred within the airport and brought a few staff in, but very few of those. There's only about 10 of those. The other thing they did was transfer people up from Cork. Cork isn't having any security queue issues at the moment, but still, with all of that, there it's you know it, it's running 30 minutes. It's gone to 45, 50, and even 70 minutes for those very early mornings. The real uh, change is that people are not missing flights. If you're arriving and if you have your boarding card telling you that you, you're not really going to make it, there are a lot of uh, management of queues going on as well. Just alert people saying, this is my flight time, will I can make it through in time? And they will bring people forward in the queue to make sure they miss it, to make sure they catch their flights. Okay. That's been happening and it has helped improve the situation a wee bit. You mentioned there about the um, capacity levels, I suppose, going, uh, there are 90% of pre-pandemic levels. Uh, is that That's demand what the being... Re- are telling us. Is that demand yeah. being reflected in the prices? And. Um, Interesting what the airlines did was, obviously they've lost a lot of money uh, over the last two years. Ryanair would have lost uh, the best part of 1.2 billion euro between the, over the two years. Aer Lingus lost losing uh, 300 million a year as well. So what I noticed was when the schedules were put into place, uh, a lot of those countries for Spain and Portugal, they were coming in fairly high prices. What we've seen in the last two weeks um, the airlines are very good at managing their demands and uh, is, is stimulating demand with lower prices. And uh, obviously, they weren't being booked up at the level that people that the airlines expected. Some of those flight those flight prices have fallen back a little bit, mm. but still pricey enough for July and August. If you're traveling before then, you can still get immense bargains. But they are keeping their eye on when that demand comes back, and there's a little bit of uncertainty still out there that they're going to make back. Uh, the money that they lost over the previous two years. Is it the long haul flights or the short haul flights that are are turning out to be more expensive than previous? Sir, I know they're coming down now, but yeah, really, the most the, there are two countries that matter in terms of summer holidays out of Ireland. More than eighty percent of our, it's about seventy three percent of our um, the entire capacity uh, will be to Spain and Portugal, and that's where I saw that sort of premium pricing trying to get it up. Mm. Long haul is subject to a whole separate set of issues. They include the price of oil. You've got to remember that what Ryanair did uh, is that they bought 80% of their fuel for this year at last year's prices. So it's hedged. It doesn't matter what happened to fuel price. They've got 80% of their 2022 fuel bought uh, and subject to be delivered at a cheap rate. So they won't be trying to get that money, the extra fuel cost back. Long haul will. The last time we had a big spike in fuel prices was 2008. Some listeners will remember fuel surcharges, uh, the likes of budget travel, putting on 30 euro fuel surcharge per leg. What will probably happen, just judging by what happened in 2008, is the first to start uh, putting up fuel fuel, uh, surcharges on fares will be the US long-haul airlines, followed by the Europeans to fly to North America, and then the package holiday people. But the last ones will be the Ryanair uh, Mm. and Aer Lingus have a certain hedging as well. It's much lower than Ryanair. They will be the last ones to put a fuel surcharge. The surcharge is a a nasty little piece of work because... Mm. You've already paid your holiday and now you're being told that you have to pay €30 Euro per person uh, extra to travel. That's what we saw in 2008. The consumer uh, legislators, uh, the uh, aviation 
people are very against it and they took moves to try and prevent that happening again. But there's no doubt that the price of fuel, plus the fact that some airlines are going to have to take longer routes because of airspace closures, that that's going to impact on long haul. Short haul will not be impacted by that at all. Yeah, that could be the difference between being able to afford a holiday and not being able to afford one at all. And more importantly, Amy, it's the difference between uh, the airline being able to run a profitable or a viable route and not being able to run it. That's where what airlines are looking for. They're coming out of one major crisis and looking into the jaws of another one. Mm. We're just running out of time there, but one last question, Owen. If you haven't booked for the summer now, is it too late? Oh, not at all. Okay, keep an eye on prices. Demand. Keep an eye on somewhere that's got a whole plethora of new routes where the demand hasn't met, uh, where the supply is exceeding the demand. Good example of that is Croatia. We've got a, for some reason, we've got two or three new services to Croatia from Ireland this summer. Another very important point about Croatia, they're very dependent on the Russian inbound market. Those Russian people cannot travel this summer. That means beds will also become available. Keep an eye, though, on the things that are going to cost a novel lot more than they did pre-pandemic. One of them is car hire. Car hire companies uh, reduced their fleets. They had got very badly paid in 2020 and that's uh, priced up and also prices on the ground for some hotels uh, hoteliers facing the same issues that we are all facing at home with home heating oil all of those sort of things there's still bargains out there and there's a few incentives and an example would be Murcia Murcia trying to compete with Alicante Benidorm and the others nearby they put in incentives like free travel insurance which is very important because if you catch COVID while you're out there you cannot fly home it's nothing to do with the regulations or the location forms you're not allowed on that aircraft all of those a little bit more complicated than it was in 2019 but there are still bargains to be had there Amy Owen Carey, travel expert. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme this afternoon. Always a great pleasure. Thank you.